Hello and welcome to This Day Devo. My name is Pastor Guy. And today we read Revelation chapter 20. Chapter 20. You are almost there. This is your next to the last day of reading. And that is incredible. And so I'm so happy for you and so proud of you to have made it this far. And I pray that you are truly growing and maturing in your faith as I seek to make and guide fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ right here at One Life Church. And I hope that revelation has caused you to fall deeper in love with Jesus. That's just greater confirmation and affirmation in your faith. I know that it has for me. Now, Revelation chapter 20, uh, the subtitle is The Thousand Years. This is this is by far the most talked about, most preached about chapter in all of the book of Revelation. Uh, it's, it's important. Uh, and a lot of people, a lot of Bible teachers take this and take it very literally. I find this to be interesting, and I have told you uh, repeatedly throughout this time in Revelation, this study of Revelation, that um, I take the vast majority of what I read in Revelation to be symbolic of what God is going to do in the end of times, um, and some things that he has already done. Uh, But other people will take this and they'll say, okay, yes, Revelation 17, symbolic, 18, symbolic, 19, symbolic. But then we get to 20 and say, oh, a thousand years, that's literal. They take it literally. And to take this to take this passage literally, it would be to say that Christ was going to come back and reign with the resurrected believers on January 1st, 2024, and they will reign until the end of the day, December 31st, 3024. I just don't I just don't think scripture sh- gives us that perfect of a literal translation in much of anything to be honest. And so the way that I view this chapter is that it is it is symbolic. It is providing visions, it is providing truth, it is showing us what things are to look like, but the thousand years is symbolic for the age of grace. The age of the the age that we're living in right now from from Christ's crucifixion and resurrection and ascension to his second coming. And that's the span of time we live in. Remember, to the Lord, a, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. We can't put a perfect time stamp on God. He kind of leads everything the way that he wants to lead everything. And so we need to relax a little bit and hold all of this with an open hand and just simply trust God. So what is my truly right? What is the conclusion to this chapter? I think the conclusion of this chapter is found in the very last verse when it says anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. This is the part that we need to know and we need to understand. And just like yesterday, the importance of our state of our souls and evangelism and witnessing to those who are lost in hopes that they don't experience being thrown into the lake of fire. You're either in or you're out. And so what do we do with this? It stirs us. And it stirs us, first of all, to praise God that our sins have been paid for on Calvary. Because what is the final death, right? This this second death, it's it's permanent separation from God and punishment eternal forever. And so for you and I, we can rest and praise in the truth that our sins are washed away and we won't experience this. And that stirs me to praise and that stirs me to tell the world about him to go tell it on the mountain 
Jesus Christ is born for the forgiveness, for the great joy of all people. So we go and we share these good tidings, these good news with everyone, everyone. So they have the opportunity to listen and say yes to Jesus. And so praise God, just like when the disciples came back from the um, the 72 disciples that went out that Jesus sent into other cities and they came back and they were celebrating that the power of God was working through them. And Jesus said to them, you don't need to praise God for that. You need to praise God that your name is written in the book of life. Right? That's God's book. That's God's record keeping. We praise God that our names are written in the book of life. And that's what I see. That's what encourages me in what I read there is to know that my name is written in the book of life because of accepting Christ. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow for, for our final round. Love you. Bye. down from heaven as the power of Christ.